Hey everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Sell Those Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we are removing the transmission valve body from the 2003 Dodge Caravan. Stay tuned, guys. replacing the transmission valve body Ooh, almost dropped it there the transmission valve body out of the 2003 Dodge Caravan now this video is good for the 2001 to 2007 Dodge Caravans uh, because you know Mopar they love sharing problems so this is your transmission valve body right here. I'm gonna show you in the video exactly where it's located. I did remove the windshield wiper reservoir, the battery and move the transmission module out of the way so I could have a lot more room to show you guys how to get in there easily and get more room if you want, okay? I have big hands, okay? I don't like putting them in tight spots and even even when removing the things that I did, I still scratched up this arm pretty good. It looked like I got in a fight with the cat, okay? So watch those points in there, especially the exhaust manifold, okay? Uh, it does have some sharp metal along there, so watch that. On the right side, I cleared out some stuff uh, to get in there. It's only held in by three bolts, guys. You can see here. Uh, there's supposed to be a sleeve here, but there's not so we got a problem now. I got to find that you got one here here and here Okay, what really gives it away is It has some electronic harness plug right on the top and a big one Nonetheless, okay, you're gonna notice this now uh, You will notice in the video this back bolt is hidden by your sensor, okay? <clears throat> uh, your uh, input speed sensor that it's actually right there on the transmission You do have to take it off and you do have to take those two transmission hydraulic hoses off guys um, Just so you know hydraulics are all about hydraulic pressure Transmissions are all about hydraulic pressure if you have a leak Okay, hydraulics do not work right. Okay, that's when you start losing gears and it is a pressure problem Okay, to anyone that knows anything about hydraulics or pneumatics, okay, they're all about pressure and building up the pressure to switch into the next gear or to engage an actuator, okay? If any of these O-rings in here are broken, okay, if they're broken, if they're torn, if they're just old, okay, or if you look in there, you see those screens in there? Those can get clogged. And when the screens get clogged, it causes a pressure problem, okay? So it is all internal. Can you clean this and it work? Maybe, maybe. But then again, electronics are in there as well. So we do know you can correct blockages. You cannot correct Chrysler Mopar going to the cheapest bidder to make your electronics, okay? So, if you are looking for a new transmission valve body for your 2001 to 2007 Dodge Caravan, you can find it in the video link down below. I put it there under parts and tools used in today's video. It's right there, guys. So, let's jump into the video, get this thing replaced, and get you guys back on the road. All right, here we go. We're going to jump right into this repair, guys. And like any repair, uh, since we're dealing with sensors, the negative side of the battery has to come off. So go ahead and loosen that off with a 10 millimeter and take that negative terminal off. Move it out of the way. Uh, the battery, I am going to take that out for this repair. Now, of course, I did see a video on YouTube of uh, another mechanic doing this repair, and they did not take the battery tray out. So it is not 
a necessary thing it is because i have big arms and big hands i want to reach in there so in the dark abyss right there you can see your valve body when i'm pointing at it and i'm going to move a couple things out of the way free up the space watch that exhaust manifold uh heat shield on the left hand side the thing is sharp and it will cut up your arm really good so definitely watch that uh let's all stay safe during this repair so I'm going to jump in there right now, grab the first 10 millimeter bolt that I have on the windshield washer reservoir. It is held on by three 10 millimeter bolts, uh, one on the left, one on the right, and then one on the bottom, which I'll show you right now. If you go ahead and follow me under the vehicle, the 2003 Dodge Caravan, we're replacing the transmission valve body on today. Right there is your transmission pan. If you have not switched your filter and gasket lately, this would be a good time to do that as well. There's your transmission valve body right there. It's held on by three long 10 millimeter bolts that are on the top side. You don't have to go from the bottom if you do not want to. You don't even have to jack the vehicle up if you don't want to. But I did because I wanna show you guys everything and what pertains and contains to this repair. So that's your other 10 millimeter bolt right there for your windshield washer reservoir. Remember as well, the windshield washer reservoir does have a hose on it. So when you go to pull it out, be careful. You don't want to tear the hose and you have to disconnect it first. So don't forget about that. Now we're going to go ahead and jump in there and go ahead and take the battery hold down off of the battery. That way we can go ahead and take the battery completely out. Make sure you loosen up the other side of the battery, your positive side. It is held on by a 10 millimeter as well. You can see me right there uh, loosening up that module. It's held on by two uh, 10 millimeter bolts, which I'm loosening off. And at that time that I was re uh, removing that module, my airline went out for my air ratchet. So it is hand tools only for the rest of this repair. Uh, 13 millimeter will take that battery hold down off. That way you can go ahead and get that battery out of the way and free up some more room for you. Now if we go ahead and look at the battery tray, uh, it is held on by three more 13 millimeter bolts. Uh, this is a 2003, so you can pretty much guarantee you will be battling corrosion through this entire repair. PB Blaster at WD-40 is going to be your best friend on this repair. So let's go ahead and soak those things in some PB Blaster. I'm going to go ahead and point uh, those three bolts to you right there. There, there, there. There's those three bolts. Uh, well, they're, they're nuts, actually. So, but they are 13 millimeter. Uh, which isn't too bad. Don't get me wrong. It's nice that they're 13 millimeter. They shouldn't hold on too tight, but two of them were okay. The third one uh, was highly corroded, and I had to go down to a 12 millimeter socket and uh, hammer it on with a baby sledge just so it had a nice tight grip. Uh, as you'll see in the video, if you do have to do that, guys, remember, there are a couple key points when you have a corroded bolt. One, do not use a 12-point sided socket. That will only strip out the bolt further. Make sure the socket is a 6-point socket. Do not try to use a open or closed-in wrench. It will not work. You have to use a 6-point socket. If the six point socket does not work after you pop it on with a little sledge, that way it has a nice tight grip, then you will have to look at extractor sockets because a stripped out bolt or stripped out nut is just terrible, terrible to fight with. All right, so now we got the battery tray. We got those three nuts out of our way. On the bottom of the battery tray, you are gonna see one hose. You see another hose at the back side there. All you're going to do is unplug that hose. It does go to a nice little air box that Dodge wanted to build into your battery tray. So do not throw that battery tray on the ground. If that thing cracks, you will throw an EVAP code. Okay, an EVAP code saying that you have a vacuum leak and you'll search everywhere, everywhere for it and will never find it because you would never suspect that it's on the battery tray. Okay, so definitely watch that. Right there on the bottom is where that bottom hose goes. And right there at the top at the back is where the hose goes 
uh, that is close to the firewall. So too easy right there, guys. Now we go ahead and move that out of the way. We can go ahead and see that third top bolt to the windshield washer reservoir. It is a 10 millimeter as well. We'll go back to that in just a second. How to grab my light real quick. It is dark in this engine. Uh, for filming, it is in the middle of the day though. It's weird. All right, so there's your 10 millimeter bolt right there. I'm gonna go ahead and point it out for you guys. Make sure you uh, spray some PB blaster on that as well. Um, the 10 millimeter bolt shouldn't really be held on that tight because it is a 10 millimeter bolt and the windshield washer reservoir is a non-moving component to your engine. So you don't have to torque the hell out of it guys, okay? So be careful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take that bolt out really quick like, like Sonic right here, boop, 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 and I'm done with it. Now, now if you remember that module right there, I'm gonna go ahead and point at it. I took the first two 10 millimeter bolts out of the top. There is a third 10 millimeter bolt at the bottom of that module. And you see me fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting with it, and it's just not moving. So I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna continue fighting with this thing. I'm gonna just unplug the harness from the module itself and move the harness out of the way. So here we go. You're gonna pinch both sides, left and right side, wiggle it a little because that thing's never been unplugged since this thing's been created in 2003. That's quite a bit of years ago. <laughs> uh, 19 years, there you go. Ha, for uh, everyone that thought I couldn't do math on the fly. All right. so. Left and right, squeeze them together, pull that thing off, uh, and move that harness out of the way so you can actually move your ratchet on that 10 millimeter bolt right there. You see me connected already with it. So we're gonna move the harness out of the way. Do not bend the harness, okay? Move it out of the way, yes. Tuck it behind something like I did on that transmission uh, dipstick tube, yes. Do not bend the harness, okay? Remember that all the plastic in this engine is corroded or degraded in some way with the vehicle being 19 years old. So do not bend those wires, okay? All right, so we got that other 10 millimeter bolt out of the windshield washer reservoir, okay? There is one more thing before you can take this washer reservoir out. It is held, oh, not held on. It has a hose on it that is ran under the front top uh, subframe, not subframe, <laughs> that top frame brace uh, that goes above your radiator, okay? If you look at your windshield washer reservoir, you'll see that rubber hose runs all the way over there, okay? You need to go ahead and it's not the windshield washer reservoir. My apologies, guys. It's the, the engine coolant reservoir, okay? You need to run that back over so it does not bind up, and then you can go ahead and remove the engine coolant reservoir out of your way. Now, do not spill it all over the engine. You don't want to make it a terrible workspace for you. All right, guys, now that we have that reservoir out of the way, we have a lot more room to work in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and move the cables back out of our way because now they're again in our way. On this side, you're gonna have quite a bit of harnesses and cables and hoses, but it's okay. Just work it around, that way it's not in your way. All right, if we go ahead and look down at your transmission valve body, now we have the two transmission hoses and that sensor on top, okay? Oh, I also have the three bolts. I'm going to go ahead and point out one, two, three. The third one, of course, is under that sensor. So what we're going to have to do, uh, what well, I have to do, because I could not find my 25 millimeter socket. So I went ahead, took the two transmission lines off, just like you're supposed to, unhook the sensor, and then I used a 17 millimeter to remove the barb connector for the transmission line and a 25 millimeter wrench to take the sensor out. Once you take the sensor out, you will be able to access that bolt, okay? And I'll show you, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in there right now and try to get those two lines off. Remember guys, these are rubber lines. Rubber lines degrade and they seize into place. As you see, I already cut up my hand real nice right there uh, from that exhaust heat shield. 
That's why I'm telling you guys, watch that thing. It got me quite a few times. I had about seven, eight, you know, cuts on my arm because of that heat shield. So definitely watch that, guys. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and grabbed a half inch drive with 12 inch extension and a 10 millimeter uh, socket on the end and got that bolt to the right of the uh, sensor. The one on the left was a little bit more difficult to grab because of the hoses in place. So it is a great time to take those hoses out of the way if they're in your way at all. There you go, there's the first bolt right there. As I said, they are long bolts, so they are going to stand out. You will know the difference between those bolts and other bolts of the car. Let's go ahead and speed myself up a little bit. That way I can show you the most important thing is getting that bolt uh, that is closest to the bell housing out. Uh, that one, it was just a 10 millimeter deep socket on the half inch drive ratchet I'm using to get that bolt out right there. Didn't remove the transmission lines even though I should have before getting that bolt. So, uh, do not make my same mistake guys. Take those transmission lines off. You will get a better uh, rotation on your ratchet so you're not there all day. Unless you're using an air ratchet then hey, do your thing. Alright guys, now that we have that second bolt out, we can go ahead and look in there. Now we have those two transmission lines. The transmission lines that should have, uh, you know, taken off already, but have not. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and grab yourself a pair of slip joint pliers and take those clamps off right there. Backing them off a little bit. Um, I did try to get those out with one hand. Of course, as I said, these lines have been on there for 19 years, so they're pretty uh, solidified. All right. Uh, I did use my uh, metal trim tool uh, to back it off some, uh, so that did come in handy. Uh, don't just tug, tug, tug on the line. If you cannot get it off, last last resort, use a razor blade and uh, cut it off. You do have extra line there. As you see, it's a little bit slack. Um, you can cut the uh, part off that's degraded at the end and use your extra slack of the transmission line. It will save you a couple bucks from having to go buy a new uh, transmission line as well. So as you see right there, I'm using the uh, trim tool to try to back off the lines. I got the right side, but um, the left side was uh, pretty on there. <laughs> so uh, I had to use both my hands. We're jumping in there, grabbing those two lines off of there. You gotta be careful. Uh, you don't want to slip and hit that sensor underneath your transmission draw body. Now, if you are wanting to know where can I get the new parts for the replacement, I have thrown it in the video description down below. It does come with two new sensors, the new gasket and the new valve body. That way you don't have to leave anything to chance you can get this thing replaced and get your vehicle back on the road. As you see right there, you have a little plastic clip. Be very careful. I used my fingernail, guys, to just uh, move it up a little to work it over the tab, and then the thing just popped right off, okay? There is no need to be, you do not want to be too tough with that little plastic tab. The thing will snap off in a heartbeat, okay? Don't believe me? Ask any, any mechanic, any, any person that's ever touched one of those plastic tabs. I'm telling you, 
they, they asked the engineer to make it as fragile as possible. Be like, Bill, I need you to make the tab on the sensor really, really fragile. That way, when they first replace it, it shoots across the engine bay, okay? That's what I need. Okay, it is that fragile. All right, so as you see, you can go ahead and uh, move that sensor right there. Uh, I did loosen it off with a 25 millimeter wrench, as you saw. I, uh, uh, as you see right there, I took the barb connector out for that transmission line, and there's your sensor right there. It comes right out. If you do have a 25 millimeter socket, then you made this job so much easier. The 25 millimeter socket will go right over that plastic uh, plug connector and go ahead and loosen off that sensor for you. Now I told that sensor, hey, stay up there, don't move. I don't want you to fall. Now, you see right there, I'm gonna go ahead and point out your last 10 millimeter bolt. We're gonna go ahead and grab the uh, half inch drive ratchet with the 12 inch extension and a 10 millimeter uh, deep socket and go ahead and grab that last 10 millimeter bolt right there. I tried it with one hand, but it just too much effort. So I need both hands to get this last bolt. I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod real quick. That way you can uh, watch me work there. And yep, that's a 12 mil, uh, 10 millimeter socket with a 12 inch extension there, half inch drive. Put you guys on the tripod right there so you can see me work here. Uh, Cause there are some naysayers out there that watch my videos and say, how does this part magically pop off? Well, now I know that you guys need to see how a ratchet turns. So here we go, that ratchet's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and that bolt comes right off. Bada-bing, bada-boom, there we go, magic. Third bolt right there, put that in your bolt tray. You do not want to lose these bolts because guess what? If you have to go to Home Depot to try to get another bolt, you are going to be searching for hours. All right, so there we go. There's our transmission valve body right there. You can put your arm down there and try to wiggle it. It's not going to move. The thing's been on there for 19 years, guys. And don't be stupid like I am right there and uh, try to move it by touching the plastic of the plug because if you are going to reuse this in any way if that thing's broken you might as well throw it in the dumpster and restart all right so right there where i'm putting the tripod that is the correct placement to remove this valve body you're going to put a, a uh pry bar right there and just go ahead and move it just a little you're not trying to pry it like crazy okay you're not trying to bend a frame back into position Okay, and there you go, that easy, it just pops off. You did notice the uh, leftover gasket right there on the bottom, that, and you also have three studs. You see two right there, right off the bat. That's actually holding the transmission valve body right into place where it's supposed to be. So that's why you wanna wiggle it just a little and not, you know, pry it uncontrollably in beast mode. Okay, there's your gasket right there. You will need to scrape all that off. It does come with the new set. Great job, guys. And you saved yourselves buku bucks. Huh? Come on. Well, it wasn't the easiest thing. It's not like changing your oil, but you just got your transmission valve body removed from your, uh, from your transmission. So, great job, guys. Um, now we have to put it back on okay now if you are looking for the transmission valve body and you want to know where to find it boom go down down below uh it is the transmission valve body solenoid pack whatever you want to call it for the 2001 to 2007 dodge caravans now with the new uh unit is a remanufactured unit off of amazon great price though Okay, uh, from all of them that I've actually looked for and used, this is a great price. My wife even asked me, why don't we just go to the junkyard and pick up one? And that's a great idea. You know what, go to the junkyard, find one that's wrecked, okay? Do not find a van, uh, do not find a donor vehicle, quote unquote, that is not wrecked. Why? That means it's there for engine failure or transmission failure. You want to find a wrecked donor vehicle. That means that someone got in an accident, still might have a good engine, and there, there you go, okay? That might save you some money. If not, this is about $120 on Amazon to, find, to get one that you know is going to work, get your vehicle back on the road, and that's what I'm going to do, okay? Um, I am purchasing mine from Amazon, the same link that I gave you guys. And that is what I'm installing 
onto the van to get it back up and going because this is our next flip and I want to get this thing out of here. Also, I was given this vehicle for free, but it didn't come with the title. So I had to put in the paperwork with Virginia to get a uh, lost title um, given to you, which is normal because a lot of people float vehicles, they float titles, which means they don't put it in their name. So you have to go to the DMV and get a new title anyways. But if you don't know how, it can just be pulling teeth. So, but uh, thankfully, uh, I found out how, and if you guys want to know in a video, please let me know in the chat section down below. As you see, super clean guys, if you want to get your vehicle clean, uh, whether it be upholstery or the engine, check out super clean guys. This thing is awesome. As you see, I have it on my toolbox right here. I love this stuff. So. All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out another great video here on the channel, Sell the Slipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and if you have any questions about your repair and getting your vehicle back up and going today with this repair, leave your questions in the comment section down below. And thank you so much, guys. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button so YouTube and myself both know I'm doing a good job. Okay, <laughs> and I will continue making great content for you guys. Thank you so much for checking out another great video. And until next time, guys, hey, keep on wrenching. Take care.